Hi everyone, in this video I install a bow thruster tunnel into the boat. I try a different way to avoid getting itchy and I alter my shed to prevent dust from getting onto everything. We'll start with the bow thruster. I bought a Luma 110TT Gen 2 28 kilo thrust unit. I set some lasers up to give whoever's interested exact measurements for what I did in my 25 foot Bertram because when I did it I only had manufacturer's instructions and some pictures of other 25s that had done it. The way I did it meets the manufacturer's specs so this will save time if you want to do it to the same type of boat. The clearance from the top of the motor to the underside of the floor concerned me so I mounted the motor on a lean towards the front of the boat but I'm sure now I could have mounted it vertically it would just would have been really close. I'll just make a support to hold the weight of the motor. It probably wanted one anyway. The summarized version of the instructions is that you should mount it as far forward as possible to help leverage. It shouldn't be mounted too high otherwise it'll suck air and cavitate. The minimum tunnel length should be twice the diameter of the tunnel. The motor can be mounted either side and in any position around the tunnel as long as the prop is in the center of the tunnel. And lastly, shape the opening of the thruster tube with either a bulge at the front of the tunnel to deflect the water from the back of the tunnel or recess the back of the tunnel to avoid scooping water into the tunnel. I knew I could get a unit that could do more thrust than the Luma I went with for a similar price but I was told more thrust only means that it would be more prone to cavitating which means losing grip on the water. When you see the tiny prop in real life you can totally understand. Once I cut the holes, I found that the chines were full of balsa wood. This is one of the pictures I looked at to do my bow thruster. I'm sure this thing would turn on the dime with just the outboards. One massive mistake I made was that I begun repairing the chines and didn't finish before starting the thruster tube. This resulted in me wasting way more time trying to fix the shape of the chine repairs after I put the thruster tube in. You need to learn from my mistakes. This thing helped me ensure the chines were symmetrical. To do this right, I should have fixed the chines before making the holes for the bow thruster, then cut out the hole for the tunnel, then dummy fit the tunnel and drill holes in hole saw for the bow thruster unit, making sure to offset so the prop is in the center of the boat, then gluing in the tunnel with epoxy resin paste, then wait for the glue to set, then grind the outsides of the tunnel to the desired shape and also grind back the chines behind the tunnel, also grind back the hull around the tunnel so that the fiberglass matting isn't protruding once it's laid. I then lay three to four sheets of medium woven matting, stepping up the sheet sizes as I went so it blended into the hull as displayed. Smallest cutout glassed in first, going to biggest cutout last. You can see in these videos I didn't do as I said. I repaired the front of my bow and the chines at the same time pretty much and it did not work out good and it was very time consuming. This is my mate and I trying to use epoxy bog to build up around the chines and the front of the thruster. Don't mix too much epoxy bog at the same time especially if it's warm otherwise you'll end up having to grind away what you just did because it will burn up and get bubbly and weak like what wow, happened to me. Like what? <laughs> Don't touch it though. This is what it looks like when your epoxy gets too hot from mixing too much. It looks like porosity in a weld, like it's aerated. So I had to grind that all back until there was no more porosity in the filler, which was pretty much everything. I rebogged and ground back the first 30 mil of the inside of the tunnel so I could wrap the glass around the inside a bit to make it definitely waterproof. It probably wasn't necessary but I did it just in case. Let me know if this was not necessary. I figured the glass would bond to more surface area and hold from a different better angle like this. Anyway, I fiberglassed that in and I fiberglassed inside the boat like this and then I put some of the peel ply stuff on that rips off nice. Did lots of fiddly grinding and 
Then I looked at it heaps to make sure everything was symmetrical and it looked pretty good. And that's the end of the bow thruster. You're just getting in that, are you? <laughs> Going to the races. <laughs> Let's get into the hazmat suit now. The reason I wanted this suit to work is so I didn't get it so itchy. Even with all the stuff I've been wearing, I've still been getting itchy. My plan was to use this suit so there was no chance of itchy stuff getting to any of my skin. But after trying it, I found it to be extremely hot. So I had an old portable air conditioning unit that I thought would be able to pump cool air into the suit through a two inch tube. But it only trickled cool air in so I tried a jumping castle blower into the suit but it blew hot air in so then I fed the air conditioner into the jumping castle motor and then into the suit and then it was good temperature except it was popping my ears and I couldn't move easily because the suit blew up like a balloon. <laughs> you can see how maneuverable I was. Oh well, it'll make a nice fancy dress costume one day. Oh shit. Oh fuck. Oh. oh shit, that's good man. That's really good. Wow. That's working, that's great. That's good. So this is my system. It's a old air conditioner unit that's jerry rigged into a jumping castle motor. And and then it, it pushes cold air into the jumping castle motor and then through here, up here, and then through the shed. Through this line. out there and then it pushes down to two inch and then it's on a bungee cord there that holds tension on it so then when I drag it down it was meant to be able to pull down and then I can work in here. I made all of that thinking I could work out a way of getting flexibility in the suit but the biggest problem was that I couldn't get in and out of the suit by myself easily, which most of the time I'm by myself. You want the grinder? This is us checking out the maneuverability. Can you fit your hands better. in both of those gloves? One of them doesn't work, eh? Hey? Yeah. To make it more manoeuvrable, I was going to strap around the arms to make it easier to bend my arms. Do you reckon you arms. could grind? I was going to install a valve to relieve the excessive air pressure and put a light on it. <laughs> it just wasn't worth the effort. Here. I made a thing on the zipper to allow me to zip it up and down from inside the suit but it was too hard. Seeing as I had already done the bulk itchy work I decided to abandon this idea which then led me to making my dust sensitive equipment isolated from dust. The mezzanine floor. I still had fun you trying though. What a disaster. My electronics area. It is up here. Not surprising after all the fiberglassing that I meant I did. to say grinding that I did. I lots of cleaning up to do. I'm gonna make a wall. Like that.
In hindsight, I should have done this before I started anything, but I tend to do everything the hard way. When I repaint the boat, I'll need as much space as possible, so I'm going to remove all the shelving and gear from that entire wall. And then my problem after this was, where was I going to put it all? But I squeezed it all over the place. I had to modify all the shelving to fit it in different areas. Lots of grinding and heavy work. The forklift is gold. Grinding's my favourite. I love grinding. Looks like a lot of work, but it wasn't that bad. It only took a couple of days of after works to do it. To tidy up the mezzanine was a different story though. It took a long time. After I put the wall there, I um, had to get all the dust off everything and then organize everything and compress it into such a small space but it's um it's pretty good now easy work compared to the bertram I plan to use this area to store all the different panels that I make for the boat in the future. I can't wait for this stage. Hopefully I don't get busted by the council. It's a bit cheeky building that close to the fence. It's all temporary anyway. Since this video I've organised the mezzanine a lot better than what it is at the moment it's just so many videos to go through I made the wall fold out so I can crane stuff onto the mezzanine still the next video I do will be finishing glassing the stringers in and getting started on the floor and all the tanks and other obstacles I have squeezing more batteries and other compartments under the floor. Please like and subscribe.